I'm at the beach in hey, my bathing hey, suit. Yeah, that's that's a thong and that's a bra. That is a bathing suit. Sir. How far would you go to make sure that the people on the beach are dressing modestly? This guy went to the fullest extent in confronting a group of girls to dress modestly. I know I'm laughing, but honestly, this is a bad take. This is a bad move, and I want to respond to it, tell you a little bit of how I would approach this, maybe the, some, some of the things we can learn from this, and also I want to talk about men's hypocrisy in purity culture a little bit later, so stay tuned. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Isaac David and this is the Daily Disciple where I help you find Jesus and follow him daily. For those of you who have been following my ministry for a while, you know that I post every single day and the only reason I can do that is because of the wonderful people on Patreon. It is because of you guys who help this ministry keep going and growing. It's my goal to go full time on Daily Disciple and uh, through your guys support we're getting closer and closer. The goal is 300 patrons and then I go full time and that's crazy because we're getting so close. Um, so head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple, the link in my bio. Now onto the video. So as I mentioned before, this guy, I, I guess he's a Christian guy. He saw some girls on the beach that were dressed well, as most people are on the beach these days, I, you know, it's not a, it's not a haven for modesty generally. Um, so the fact that he seems a little bit surprised is kind of interesting to me. I'm like, it's a beach, my guy, but he wanted to confront these girls and he did it in a very interesting way. So let's. Uh, respond. <laughs> okay, so why, why do you dress this way? Dude, I'm hot and I like women, so please leave us alone. Well, Kindly. Well, take, take young. I'm at the beach in take, my bathing take, suit. Yeah, that's that's a thong and that's a bra. That is a bathing take suit. Young sir. guys into consideration. They don't need to see pornography, right? We're not coming up to you, bothering you. Please go away. You're flaunting your stuff. I'm not flaunting anything. Don't Okay, okay, don't get me wrong. I'm not one of these progressive Christians that just says, oh my goodness, it doesn't matter what you wear. Um, just wear whatever you want. God doesn't care at all and, and all this kind of thing. I'm like, no, I have standards, okay? And I think Christians should have standards that are based on the word of God. What I'm sad about is the way in which that this guy decides, I'm gonna go up to these girls and my primary message to them is dress modestly. Because, well, why? I don't know, because, because you should, right? And to them, who, these non-Christian girls, they don't know what's going on. It's just some guy coming up to them telling them they should put on more clothes. It doesn't make sense. It's behavioral modification. It's him trying to get them to change their outsides, but he's not addressing what's on the inside. And the goal should be to engage with them on a deeper level, not just saying, hey, look, you need to change what's going on on the outside, but rather what's going on in the inside. And you know the message that actually talks about that is the gospel, the gospel message. It says that on the inside, Side, we are all fallen. We all we are all broken, sinful people, and because of that, we deserve death. We deserve God's judgment and His wrath, and that's horrifying and that's scary. But it's a reality we all need to come to terms with. But then enter the good news of the gospel. Jesus coming to this earth, fully God and fully man, to live the sinless life that we could not live, to die on the cross, the death we deserve to die for our sins against God, bringing redemption, restoration, and reconciliation with God through his resurrection, defeating sin and death. Like that is an amazing message that we ought to be excited about sharing because you know what it does? When, when we believe, put our faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit enters us and begin, we begin to be transformed from the inside out, this process of sanctification by which our desires now are changed, where we are now less and less wanting to move towards sin and, uh, you know, what is evil, but now we actually motivated by love and joy and, and just love for God that we want to obey him and honor him and how we dress and how we behave. And I think that's the greater issue of modesty. It's not as much as what we're wearing, although I do think that is an element to it. And each one of us Christians, as we're discerning, okay, how can I best honor God? We're discerning what we, what we feel like is appropriate to wear. But ultimately, we need to be looking in our heart too. What is our heart posture towards God? And this guy, he's not addressing any of that. And I'm not saying you can have a whole sermon on this, but your, your entry point should not be dress more modestly. It needs to be, hey, do you, what do you think happens after somebody dies? Do you know who Jesus is? Can I share with you uh, what the Bible is all about? Like these different questions are going to be a lot more interesting and a lot more helpful in actually beginning to change behavior because our motivation is to start from the inside, not just behavioral modification. Don't look at me. How, how, 
you look around and, and you the only thing that sticks out because your whole body Okay, well, why are you looking at me? Oh, get the f eyes. What no. if you no. say gouge your no. eyes out if I f bother you? to talk to me? Here's the thing. Please, no. You didn't, Please, you didn't, but there, but here's the thing. There's okay. free will in America. There's no, freedom bro, of speech. You don't get the and, and, if, and, if, and if men of God don't stand up, then our society's gonna go go down the drain because there's no morality. I'm atheist, sorry. Okay, okay. We need less of, we need less of this, okay? We need less of this. And we need more godly men instead of standing up and saying, look how bad the world is. Look at how inappropriate and immodest they are. We need to actually say, hey, look, this is the gospel message. This is the, the bad news of sin and our rebellion against God, but the good news of Jesus and his redemption, reconciliation and restoration of who we are, making us into a new creation and how that is available to you. That is an amazing message, an exciting message. Man, it's so frustrating because this might be their only encounter with a so-called Christian, you know, in this year or in their life, perhaps, right? Uh, this might be their only opinion and perspective of, of what Christianity is all about. It's like, oh, well, Christian Christianity is just about being a good person and dressing more modestly, I guess. It's like, no, bro. Like, it's actually having your inside transformed by God and and being forgiven and given salvation and, and freedom from sin. Like, it, it, man, my heart just breaks that this is their only encounter with, with Christianity. Like, this is what they've seen. So I've seen this type of guy out in the wild before. Um, I've been guilty of some of these kind of tendencies where you're, you feel like, oh man, like, why are these girls dressing this way? Or maybe even on Instagram, you're like, oh, why are they dressing so immodestly? Like, there's no modest Christian girls out there. Everybody's so inappropriate these days. And you get so, you get on your mighty horse. You're like your mighty horse. I don't know if that's how you put it. You get in your high horse. You get on your mighty high horse and you're like, oh man, well, why can't they just like be better Christians or just be better people? So then I actually, you know, because then we're talking about looking at potential spouses and partners and we're judging these girls. But then it's like, whoa, bro, there's so much hypocrisy going on because if you just look at the statistics, the probability is that a Christian guy has been looking at pornography at least every month, maybe on the weekly, maybe even on the daily. And yet we are so quick to see other girls' sins, as sexual sins, as so much greater than our own. We're like, oh, well, if they've lost their virginity, that's ton, like 10 times greater than my consistent mental adultery. The truth is, is that we are all guilty of sexual sin, not just people who have um, dressed immodestly or lost their virginity or, you know, it's like pornography is a big issue. We are all guilty. We are all in, we all need to repent of that. And then moving forward into like looking for a potential spouse, right? It's not that we don't have any standards, right? So it's not like, oh, well, we're, I guess we're all sin so it doesn't matter I'll just go with anybody or whatever it's like no okay you can still have standards but I'm saying that in forming your standards you need to take a good long look at yourself and actually see do I measure up to what I'm holding other people to do I meet the same standard of judgment that I push against other people because that's what the Bible says right it's like judge not lest you be judged a lot of people use that incorrectly and just say you shouldn't judge at all it's like no judging's okay but you need to know that that same judgment is going to be put on you. And unfortunately, a lot of guys are falling short of that because we have this sin of pornography, of lust that we've decided is normal or it's okay. And it's not as bad as girl sins, but it's not true. Ultimately, our goal is to become the person that we would want to be with, right? The standards that we hold for other people that we're actually actively moving towards meeting those standards. Then we're not having these high unrealistic expectations of people. And we're actually looking at who they are becoming and not just who they were, right? It's so easy to cast judgment on who people were before they were Christians or even younger Christians, right? We're all in this progressive journey. And what I want for guys is to spend a lot less time obsessed about finding the good, you know, Christian modest girl and spend a lot more time on their mission, on having focus, on having discipline and a desire to build lasting legacy. You see in that mindset, when we're focused on building God's kingdom, we're not concerned about people's past. We're concerned about where people are going. And so as you find that potential spouse or that potential partner, and you're looking at that person, you're like, you're less concerned about, okay, what did they do in their past? And you're now seeing like, what is God doing in their life now? And where's he taking them? And that's like the exciting piece. Like, of course, there's a conversation to be had about modesty. And ultimately, I think modesty has a lot more to do with um, what's on the inside than what's on the outside. It's our heart posture towards God. 
But, you know, I think we need to begin with ourselves. And for a lot of us guys, I think we're guilty and we're, we're, we're hypocrites in a, lot of, in a lot of ways. And I know I've been guilty of that in the past. And I'm trying to work on that. It's like, how can I... How can I grow more towards Christ? How can I be more um, focused on God and repent of sin and lust and, and flee that temptation? To summarize, I'm not saying you shouldn't have standards. On the contrary, I'm saying that you need to meet those same standards or at least be attempting to meet those same standards that you hold on other people. In terms of unbelievers, you shouldn't be casting any kind of like, oh, you need to do better at this. You need to be better at this because they are unsaved. They don't have the desire to honor God. So why should they? We need to bring them the gospel message so they actually have a reason to want to honor God because they've seen how amazing he was in sacrificing himself on the cross. So then their heart is changed and they actually have the motivation to serve him and see what modesty actually looks like for them in their context and discerning that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and got something from it. Thank you again to everyone on Patreon that makes this content possible. Without you, I couldn't be doing this. I couldn't be making daily content and it's so exciting that we're getting closer and closer to for me being able to do this full time and that means more longer form videos like this on a more consistent basis for sure. Um, so thank you so much guys and uh, I will see you next time. God bless.